No matter where you roam in this seaside fishing village of Barnegat Light, Captain John Larson's footprints and legacy have left a lasting impact. He was the classic example of a self-made man, a sea captain in the finest sense who braved an untamed ocean and a wild inlet, a highliner who turned sand into gold, a fisherman who always makes a payday for his crew and the people who work for him. I started here in these shacks in uh, about 46, 1946. Uh, one thing led to another, you know, little rowboats, and the sailboats, clamming, bait and cut fish gear in these little shacks behind me here in high school. That's probably where we got serious. John was a go-getter. As soon as he got on his father's boat, it was a wooden head boat. It wasn't long before he got a, a steel one built, the Miss Morning at Light, you know, a steel boat from Newburn, North Carolina. And then he was an electronic genius. So he's, uh, first thing he did was get a, a scanner that he could lower a transducer down, pick up wrecks miles away. So between the two of us, we did good on offshore wreck fishing. And uh, it was good for my business. And John was a big help to me. My father came over in 1923 from a, uh, an island in Norway and settled over here in the same sort of environment. With a strong Norwegian lineage, is it any wonder that Captain Larson would end up making his living and raising his family within sight of Barnegat Inlet and the Atlantic Ocean? After all, he went to the one-room schoolhouse in Barnegat Light, where he had one teacher for all five grades. Today, that one-room schoolhouse is the Barnegat Light Museum. With Marion, his loving wife of 56 years, the couple raised seven children in Barnegat Light, most, if not all of them, having at one time or another helped their father make a living from the sea. Perhaps Captain Larson will best be remembered by the thousands of everyday anglers who joined him for a day of blue fishing on his legendary party boat, the Miss Barnegat Light, John's home away from home. Captain Larson and fellow Captain Luke Puskus were instrumental in making tilefish a must-have entree on the menus of some of the most prominent East Coast seafood restaurants. I said I was going back to do what I know best. And I starved to death for about five years. And once we got a little taste of tile fishing, we made a big business out of it, made a little money, got some enough money for a down payment to buy the dock. Anyway, one thing led to another, one boat, two boats, three boats, four boats, you know, the whole thing. In the early 1970s, they were the first of the so-called tile tycoons. Both captains pioneered the catching and marketing of this long forgotten species of tasty white-fleshed fish that burrowed in the muddy clay walls of the submerged canyons it was this tremendous run of tile fish that enabled John and Lou to purchase Barnegat Light's Viking Village and the Barnegat Light Yacht Basin, the latter also owned by fellow party boat captain Charles Ebley Sr. When stocks of tile fish began to decline, Captain Larson already had his eye on a new venture, scalloping. In 1951, I graduated from high school and I worked on a scalloper that summer. He was so successful he quickly became owner, or part owner, of eight commercial fishing vessels. Is it any wonder that Captain Larson's forward-thinking vision turned Barnegat Light into one of the East Coast's largest and most productive ports for both scallop boats and crews? Perhaps his most adventurous project was his involvement in green energy projects, specifically ocean-based wind farms that could generate environmentally friendly electricity and create new employment for boat captains, deep sea divers, and offshore work crews. Well, I gotta tell you about the first job I got for him, and uh, sure enough, I got sick every day. Helping fishermen is Captain John Larson's legacy. 
That's why he supported groups like the Garden State Seafood Association, Blue Water Fishermen's Association, and the Fisheries Survival Fund. Somewhere in heaven, God broke Johnny's mold, because those of us who knew him will tell you he was certainly one of a kind. Look on the other side of the harbor here, I have a, a boat called the L'Oreal.